and when thou prayest. Thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray, standing in the synagogues, and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut to thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. I am hoping to help as many Israelites and strangers with their prayer life. As soon as the people of the Most High understand the power in praying and fasting, you will begin to see a change in your life. Israelites, you also have to know how the enemy interfere with your prayers. The time has come for you to know the role the workers of iniquity play in making sure your prayers never reach the Father. Some people believe once they repent of their sins and they start to pray, they expect their prayers to be heard. Israelites, if you're praying to an idol, your prayers will never be heard. The Satans disconnect many of you from the Most High, the Father, by making you pray to idols instead of praying directly to the Father. Israelites, any idol that stands between you and the Father will remove the presence of the Father from your life. The scripture said, there shouldn't be any other God before the Most High. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. The sin of idolatry never ceased from the Israelite community. This generation of Israelites are not exempt from following after their ancestors who forsook the Most High for the gods of the heathens. The Israelites in every generation struggle with the sin of idolatry. Despite the scriptures informing the world that we were made in the image of the Most High, it doesn't stop the Israelites and other indigenous black nations from serving gods that don't look like them. The Satans in the beast system have convinced the indigenous black people that the Most High is white as well as the word of God when he became flesh. Because the Israelites have forgotten their God, they are worshiping anything the heathens tell them that is the Most High, the God of Israel. If the Israelites knew their God, they wouldn't accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior in religion. The scripture said the Messiah is the image to the invisible God. Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? If Jesus is the image to the invisible God and you are made in the image of the Most High, the Father, who is this God from Rome that was presented to us in Christianity as the Most High, the Father in the flesh? The Roman God look like the children of the fallen angels and speak like the dragon the scriptures in the Bible speak of. The Roman God is lawless. The Roman God many people have accepted as their Lord and Savior don't have the same image as the God of Israel. He doesn't bear the name of the Father, nor does the Roman God does the will of the Father. In the false awakening, some Israelites take the Roman God, transform him black, and continue to follow the exact lawless doctrines of the Messiah God that speak like the dragon. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Israelites, as long as you keep praying to an idol, your prayers will never be heard. The Satans use the workers of iniquity to promote the Roman God as the most high in the flesh to get you to worship the idol. When you bow down to worship the Roman God, you violate the first commandment of the most high. In addition, you have trade the Most High for the false gods of the heathens when you worship idols. The scripture said in the book of Jeremiah that my people have changed their God and trade their glory for the lesser. The scriptures foretold everything that is happening in the previous generations as well as this generation. There are many Israelites who have forsaken the God of Israel for the Roman God. For a lack of knowledge, they have trade their glory for the lesser. 
Hath a nation changed their gods, which are yet no gods? But my people have changed their glory for that which doth not profit. Be astonished, O ye heavens, at this, and be horribly afraid. Be ye very desolate, saith the Lord. For my people have committed two evils. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and hewed them out cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no water. I know a great majority of you are saying, I have never traded my glory for the lesser. When you were in religion and bow down to the Roman God, you have traded your glory for the lesser. When you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you changed gods. The Most High have just exposed the world of duality. The Roman God in religion is not the God of Israel. The world don't serve the Most High. They serve idols. That is why the scripture said in the book of Corinthians, the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to the most high, the father. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devils and not to God. And I would not that ye should have fellowship with devils. Satan have the Roman God posing as the word of God when he was flesh. The Roman God have also stolen the identity of the God of Israel. Remember, Satan imitates everything the Most High does to deceive. In the awakening, some Israelites are still bowing down to worship the Roman God as well as to pray to the Roman God. Israelites, transforming the Roman God black doesn't make him Joshua ben Joseph in the flesh or the word of God. If his characteristics don't reflect the Father, the black version of the Roman God continued to take the glory of the father for himself. He is still the Roman God in black face. The most high will not share his glory with anyone. I am the Lord. That is my name. And my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. The sooner Israelites realize that the most high will not give his glory to another, they will finally comprehend that they were lied to by the high-level workers of iniquity and religion about Jesus being the Most High, the Father in the flesh. The Trinity doctrine is a false doctrine. The purpose of the Satans creating the Godhead as three parts to get you to violate the laws of the Most High. When you violate the laws, it brings a separation between you and the Most High. When you pray to an idol, your prayers won't be heard. That is why it's important for you to know who you serve. In addition, you truly need to know who the Messiah is and his purpose. If Israelites everywhere can understand this truth, they will begin to see the most high sovereignty. In addition, their prayer life will be resurrected. Israelites, don't let the idols of this world cause a separation between you and your God. Idolatry is a sin the most high hate the most. Idolatry will hinder your prayers. But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. Isaiah chapter 59 verse 2 said, Your sins will not only separate you from the Father, but the Most High will hide his face from you, and he will not hear you when you pray. Israelites, we cannot afford to have the Most High hide his face from us. Nor could we afford for the Most High to not hear us when we pray. If the Most High hide his face from you and he doesn't listen to your prayers, he gave you into the hands of your idol gods. The idols the heathen serve in the beast culture are the fallen angels. The reason we see an increase of idolatry among Israelites as well as the other indigenous black bloodlines, the Most High has given them into the hands of the idols they bow down to worship. A great majority of Israelites and indigenous black people worship Jesus. Since they chose Jesus over the God of Israel, the Most High let their iniquities destroy them. It was prophesied that the Most High would hand them over to their lust and put a strong delusion upon them. The Most High has hardened their hearts like he did with Pharaoh. To the remnant, you should focus on the people that have an ear to hear. Don't waste your time on those who have accepted the idols of the heathens as their gods. If they don't have an ear to hear, move on. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. 
And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. The time have come for us to accept that a great majority of indigenous black people are not a part of the remnant. The scripture said narrow is the way and only a few will find the road to life. Israelites, once you know who the word of God is, as well as his role when it comes to our prayers, the Satans won't be able to deceive you through imitations and deceptions. If you have been following this channel, you will know that the Messiah sent in the father's name was Joshua ben Joseph. Many of you call him Yahshua. Before he became flesh, he was the word of God, the most high's intercessor, Michael. When you know who Yahshua was before he became flesh, you will be able to see him everywhere in the scriptures. The only way to see him in the scriptures, the most high first have to draw you to him. Then he will allow the Holy Spirit to show you his beloved son in the scriptures. The heathens have shadow banned the true Messiah in the scriptures in the Bible, especially the New Testament. However, if you serve the true God of Israel, you will know that the Most High has disguised and hid the Messiah in the scriptures. The angel of the Lord is one title that hides the identity of Michael in the scriptures. The Messiah said the Most High has to draw you to him. If the Most High don't draw you to him, you won't find him. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me. Draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Did you hear that, Israelites? Let me repeat what the scripture said. No one can come to me except the Father which have sent me, draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Some Israelites are led to believe that they came to the Messiah at their own accord. As the scripture just said, you can't just come to the Messiah. The scripture said the Most High, the Father, have to draw you to the Messiah. So many of you have rejected the Father for the Roman God. Therefore, you serve the Messiah that came in his own name. Religion misled so many to believe they have to accept the Messiah as their Lord and Savior. The scripture said the Most High, the Father, have to draw you to him. If you don't know the Father, how can he draw you to the correct Messiah? So many have accepted an idol as their Lord and Savior. The reason so many Israelites cannot find Joshua ben Joseph in the scriptures, the Father didn't draw them to him. The Israelites whose eyes are closed will never comprehend the scriptures unless the Father opened the scriptures to give them understanding. Israelites, the time has come for you to let the scriptures speak for themselves. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. The Satans have deceived many Israelites to pray to idols in the beast religion. Because so many indigenous black people pray to idols, that is why their prayers are unanswered. Also, they cannot get the help they need to overcome their enemies in the beast system. As long as you are praying to an idol, the Most High, the Father, will never hear your prayers. Satan disabled many Israelites when he taught them how to pray in the beast religion. A lot of Israelites don't know what is happening behind the scenes when they pray. Before I show you what happens behind the scenes concerning your prayer life, let's talk about how Yahshua taught his disciples how to pray. After Yahshua was done praying, one of his disciples came to him and asked him to teach them how to pray. When Yahshua taught his disciples how to pray, Yahshua started the prayer by addressing the Father. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven so on earth. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. For we also forgive every one that is indebted to us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Yahshua led the prayer with our Father which are in heaven. Yahshua taught his disciples to direct their prayers to the Father. After addressing the Father that is in heaven, he said, Hallowed be thy name. Yahshua taught his disciples to praise the Father first in the prayer. The Messiah taught his disciples to ask for the Most High's kingdom to come and his will to be done in the earth. 
Yahshua went on to show his disciples how to ask for their daily bread. In other words, their daily provisions. Yahshua taught his disciples to repent when he said in the prayers, forgive us of our sins. Yahshua also taught his disciples to pray for those who have owed them. Yahshua closed the prayer with asking the Father to protect them from the evil one, which are the Satans in the entire kingdom of darkness. Listen to the prayer again. And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, as in heaven so on earth. Give us day by day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, for we also forgive every one that is indebted to us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Israelites, we are letting the scriptures speak. This is how the Messiah, many of you say you follow, taught his disciples to pray. Yeshua taught his disciples how to get straight to the point. When it comes to the beast religion, the workers of iniquity teach the people to pray through the Messiah. Yahshua didn't teach his disciples to pray through him, but directed the disciples to pray to the Father. If we had to pray through the Messiah, why didn't the Messiah taught his disciples to pray through him? You heard the prayer Yahshua taught his disciples twice. Nowhere in the example prayer did Yahshua say, pray through me or to me to get your prayers to the Father. Let the scripture speak. The religious leaders in the beast religion, when they pray, majority of the time, they are yelling from the top of their lungs, jumping around, and some pastors begin to speak in their version of speaking in tongues. When you look at their prayers, it's a performance instead of a conversation with the Most High. Majority of the time, the prayers are full of wants. Most people don't even take the time to praise the Most High or repent before making their multiple requests known. Most people view the father as this rich daddy in heaven that would give them everything they want. Most people seek the father for material possessions instead of asking the father to deliver their soul from hell, as well as to deliver them from the wicked one, Satan. The way the workers of iniquity taught many to pray in the beast religion does not reflect the way the Messiah taught his disciples. Yahshua prayer was short and to the point. Religion teach us to babble and put on a performance when praying. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. In the book of Matthew, the Messiah said to the disciples to pray to the Father. The Messiah said to the disciples to enter your closet. Your closet can be a place where you can be alone with the Father. It doesn't have to be a literal closet. The Messiah said, Pray to the Father in secret, and the Father will reward you openly. In Matthew's account of the Messiah teaching the disciples how to pray, he said, go to the Father in secret. The Messiah didn't say, pray to me or pray in my name when you enter your closet in secret to pray. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet. And when thou hast shut to thy door, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. As you can see, Israelites, the Messiah taught the disciples to pray to the Father. In the example prayer the Messiah shared, he showed the disciples to praise the Most High in their prayer, repent of their sins, ask for the Father's kingdom to come. The Messiah showed them to ask the Father for their daily provisions, as well as to protect them from the evil one. The humbled Messiah didn't teach his disciples to worship him nor to pray to him. It's not until the book of John in the Bible, we hear the Messiah saying, anything you ask in my name, you shall receive. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Israelites, when it comes to the scriptures and religion's interpretation of the scriptures, you have to make sure that what they teach you correspond with the scriptures. We were taught in Christianity to pray in Jesus' name. The workers of iniquity said we must pray in Jesus' name to be heard by the Most High, the Father. A question we should have asked our pastors is, why must we ask in Jesus' name in order to be heard of the Father if Jesus is God the Father in the flesh? Because the Most High put a spirit of deep sleep upon us, we were blinded by religious doctrines. 
The scriptures in the book of John said, anything you ask in my name, I will do so that the father can be glorified in the son. The scriptures didn't say the father will do it. Yeshua said, anything you ask, I will do it. And whatsoever he shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the father may be glorified in the son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Another question to ask oneself is, are we to ask the Father or are we to ask Yeshua? The last time I checked, the Messiah came in the Father's name. If he came in the Father's name, why must we ask in his name? The verse also didn't say, when we pray, we must ask in his name. It just said, anything you ask in my name, that I shall do. For countless generations, we have been asking in Jesus' name, as well as in Yahshua's name, what is the success rate of receiving the things you ask in his name? I am sure it's low because many people don't know Joshua ben Joseph. They know the other Messiah that came in his own name. Asking in his name sounds like the other Messiah speaking. Israelites, it's important that you direct your prayers to the Father just like the Messiah taught his disciples to do when he taught them how to pray. We must leave behind the demonic teachings from the pagan church. The high level workers of iniquity are teaching you how to worship and serve their idols in religion. They don't know the God of Israel. Therefore, they are not qualified to teach you how to serve the most high. Our ancestors, when they prayed, None of them prayed to the angel of the Lord that was present in their generations, nor did they pray in the name of the prophets used to do the will of the Father in those days. Our fathers, who didn't serve idols, prayed to the Father. King David wrote psalms that are in the Bible. None of his psalms are praying to the angel of the Lord. David is praying to the Most High, the Father. O Lord, our Lord. How excellent is thy name in all the earth, who has set thy glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained a strength because of thine enemies, that thou mightest still the enemy and the avenger. When I consider thy heavens, the work of thy fingers, the moon and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, and the son of man that thou visitest him? But thou hast made him a little lower than the angels, and hast crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the works of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, yea, and the beast of the field, the fowl of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever passeth through the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Israelites, religion distorted the role of the Messiah when he became flesh. His purpose was rewritten to give the God of this world glory. Remember, Satan said in his heart he wants to be like the Most High. Everyone know that the Messiah is our mediator and advocate. The scripture said that he is our intercessor. Since the Messiah is our mediator and intercessor, he would be responsible to present the prayers of the righteous to the Father. As he present our prayers, he could intercede on our behalf, mediate between the Most High and men. My little children, these things write I unto you, that ye sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Israelites, did you hear the scripture? The scripture said there is one God. The scriptures didn't say there was a trinity, but one God. Israelites, we got to let the scriptures speak. The scripture identify Yahshua as the mediator between God and men. The book of Enoch identified Michael as the most high's intercessor. And I will give thee, Enoch, my intercessor, the archistratage, Michael, for the handwritings of thy fathers, Adam, Seth, Enos, Canaan, Mahalalel, and Jared, thy father. We know Yahshua is the key holder to the kingdom, according to the scriptures in the Bible. 
Yahshua said to Peter that I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bound on earth, you shall bound in heaven. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. The scriptures in the book of Baruch revealed that Michael was the key holder to the kingdom in heaven. He alone had the key, for he is the commander in chief, the highest ranking angel or son of God. When the word of God was made flesh, he said to Peter that I will give you the key to the kingdom of heaven. Only the one who had the key to the kingdom of heaven can give the key to Peter, correct? And the angel took me and led me thence to a fifth heaven, and the gate was closed. And I said, Lord, is not this gateway open that we may enter? And the angel said to me, We cannot enter until Michael comes, who holds the keys of the kingdom of heaven. But wait, and thou shalt see the glory of God. Like I said to you before, Israelites, only the Most High can open your eyes to see who Michael truly is. Don't let the Satans steal the truth the Most High is revealing at this time. Don't let other Israelites' unbelief of the truth cause you to stumble. Work out your own salvation. The scriptures you just heard made it very clear who Michael is. Let's find out what happens behind the scenes when the righteous pray and when the wicked pray. Israelites, the angels play a major part when it comes to our prayers. The appointed angels take our prayers and bring them to our mediator, Michael. And there was a great sound as thunder. And I said, Lord, what is this sound? And he said to me, even now, Michael, the commander of the angels, come down to receive the prayers of men. And behold, a voice came, let the gates be opened. And they opened them. And there was a roar as of thunder. And Michael came and the angel who was with me came face to face with him and said, Hail, my commander, and that of all our order. And the commander Michael said, Hail, thou also our brother and the interpreter of the revelations to those who pass through life virtuously. And having saluted one another, thus they stood still. And I saw the commander Michael holding an exceedingly great vessel. Its depth was as great as the distance from the heaven to earth, and its breadth as great as the distance from north to south. And I said, Lord, what is that which Michael, the archangel, is holding? And he said to me, This is where the merits of the righteous enter, and such good works as they do, which are escorted before the heavenly God. And as I was conversing with them, behold, angels came bearing baskets full of flowers, and they gave them to Michael. And I asked the angel, Lord, who are these, and what are the things brought hither from besides them? And he said to me, These are angels who are over the righteous. And the archangels took the baskets and cast them into the vessel. And the angel said to me, These flowers are the merits of the righteous. And I saw the other angels bearing baskets, which were neither empty nor full. And they began to lament and did not venture to draw near because they had not the prize complete. And Michael cried and said, come hither also, ye angels, bring what ye have brought. And Michael was exceedingly grieved and the angel who was with me because they did not fill the vessel. The book of Baruch revealed the identity of the angel that present the prayers of the righteous upon the golden altar that is before the throne of the Most High in the heavens. The book of Revelation said the angel stood at the altar having a golden censer that he must offer upon the altar along with the prayers of the righteous. The book of Baruch revealed Michael as the angel presenting the prayers of the righteous to the Most High. The book of Revelation confirm what the book of Baruch have said for the Israelites that need to see or hear it in the Bible to believe. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. As you can see, the angels are very involved with our daily lives. 
before bringing the prayers to Michael, the angels take all the prayers of the righteous from the face of this earth. The scriptures in the book of Baruch call them virtue, flowers, or merits. Michael then takes our prayers and presents them to the Father. And in that very hour, Michael departed and the doors were closed. And there was a sound as thunder. And I asked the angel, what is the sound? And he said to me, Michael is even now presenting the merits of men to God. After Michael presents the prayers of the righteous to the Most High, he gives the angels that bring the prayers of men the response from the Most High concerning their prayers. Michael said to the angels that bring baskets full of prayers to reward them a hundredfold all the righteous that do good works. And in that very hour, Michael descended and the gate was open and he brought oil. And as for the angels which brought the baskets, which were full, he filled them with oil saying, take it away, reward our friends and a hundredfold and those who have laboriously wrought good works. For those who sow virtuously also reap virtuously. And he said also to those bringing the half empty baskets, come hither ye also. Take away the rewards according as ye brought, and deliver it to the sons of men. Then he said also to those who brought the full and to those who brought the half-empty baskets, Go and bless our friends, and say to them that thus says the Lord, You are faithful over a few things. I will set you over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Israelites, you heard Michael saying to the angels in the book of Baruch, Say to the righteous, you are faithful over a few things. I will set you over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Michael said the exact same thing Yahshua said in the book of Matthew when he told his disciples about the parable of the talents. Let the scriptures speak. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. The scriptures in the book of Baruch reveal Michael presenting our prayers and speaking with the Father on our behalf. Once the Most High give his rewards, Michael give it to the angels that collect our prayers to bless the righteous, also giving the righteous the answers to their prayers. Israelites, if you allow the Holy Spirit to reveal truth to you, as well as guide you to the scriptures that have the truth, you will be set free from the lies and falsehoods from the Satans in the beast system. You can't be afraid to go deep with the Most High, the Father, nor should you be afraid of the truth the Most High is making available at this time. The truth of the Most High's words will never confirm the lies from religion. Go to the Father in prayer and ask him to show you who he is. Let go of religious doctrines. Behind the scenes, the angels are taking our prayers to bring to our mediator and high priest to present them to the Father on our behalf. Before our prayers even reach the Father, the angels assigned must collect our prayers first. Nowhere in the scriptures do we see or hear of Jesus doing what we see Michael, the archangel, do on our behalf. If he's just an angel that protects us, why is he presenting the prayers of the righteous, the job of the Messiah, to the Father? And I said to him, I pray thee, O Lord, tell me thy name, that I may call upon thee in the day of tribulation. And he said, I am the angel who intercede for the nation of Israel, that they may not be smitten utterly, for every evil spirit attacketh. And after these things I awake. And bless the Most High and the angel who interceded for the nation of Israel and for all the righteous. The truth is out there for all who seek it. Only the Holy Spirit can lead you to where it's hidden. Israelites, there are times when the angels don't have prayers in their baskets to give to Michael. Their baskets are empty, while some angels' baskets were half full. Not all of the angels had a basket full of prayers to give to Michael to present to the Father. The people of the Most High are not praying enough. A great majority are praying to idols and their prayers are not being heard. The angels, whose job it is to collect the prayers, grieve when their baskets are not full of prayers to give to Michael. Michael himself grieve. The angels even request to be removed from among men because the heart of men is desperately wicked. 
Michael had to encourage them to continue so that Satan don't prevail. And then came in like manner other angels weeping and bewailing and saying with fear, Behold, how we are overclouded, O Lord, for we are delivered to evil men, and we wish to depart from them. And Michael said, Ye cannot depart from them, in order that the enemy may not prevail to the end. But say to me that ye ask. And they said, We pray thee, Michael, our commander, transfer us from them, for we cannot abide with wicked and foolish men, for there is nothing good in them, but every kind of unrighteousness and greed. Israelites, we shouldn't put the angels and our intercessor in a position where they don't have enough prayers to present to the Father on our behalf. I hope after listening to this message, it will encourage many of you to pray without ceasing. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. If the beast religion so many Israelites take refuge in would teach this truth, the world would be a better place. The people would understand their creator and what is expected of them. However, because the earth was given into the hands of the wicked, Satan will continue to be an adversary to the righteous on this earth until the Most High choose to judge his creatures. From what we learn in the scriptures in the book of Baruch, the prayers of the sinners are not gathered by the angels. That is why some of the angels had half full baskets and some had empty baskets. The scriptures reveal sin hinder your prayers. The scriptures in the book of Peter charge the husbands to give honor to their wife and dwell with them according to knowledge so that their prayers are not hindered. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. The scriptures in the book of John said the Most High don't even listen to sinners. Israelites, that is why it's important for you to repent daily for known and unknown sins. The book of Proverbs revealed that anyone who turns from the law or from hearing the laws, their prayers is an abomination. Yet religion teach the laws are done away with. Israelites, I hope you're starting to see how religion is setting you up for failure. The book of Psalms said, if you have any iniquity in your heart, the Most High will not hear you. This explains why so many have unanswered prayers. Now we know that God heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of God and doeth his will, him he heareth. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. The reason religion teach to pray to Jesus and to pray in Jesus' name to prevent your prayers from ever reaching the Most High. Any idol that stands between you and the Most High will remove the presence of the Most High from your life. When you repent and return to the Father with all of your heart, the Most High will hear your prayers. You just learn how the angels collect the prayers of the righteous behind the scenes. They don't collect the prayers of the wicked and sinners. Don't let religion deceive you into believing you can go to the Father in Jesus' name and your prayers are heard. Repent and turn from your wicked ways. After true repentance take place, the ears of the Father is listening to your prayers. But the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Ever since the Most High have been revealing the identity of Michael on this channel, so many Israelites wants to know how to end their prayers and whose name they should pray in. Some ask if they should pray in the name of Michael, Jesus, or Yeshua when praying. If you're righteous, the Messiah stand with you. You can go boldly into the throne room of the Most High and pray directly to the Father. You don't have to pray in anyone's name. When Yeshua taught his disciples how to pray, did he tell them to pray in his name? Praying in another God's name is like serving two masters. Can a person serve two masters? No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God and mammon. Israelites, did our fathers pray in the name of the angel of the Lord? Our ancestors always direct their prayers to the Father. Israelites, thank the Most High, the Father, for hearing your prayers when you end your prayers. When you pray, 
you're having a conversation with the most high. When you're having a conversation, you don't need to add a third party to have a conversation with the person you want to speak to. Likewise, Israelites, you can go directly to the Father and pray. Don't let the Satans make your prayer life complicated. Remove the idols that take the place of the Father in your heart. Remember, the God of Israel is not sharing his glory with anyone. Praying is a private matter that is between you and your God. The Messiah said, pray in secret to the Father in your closet. Israelites, don't let the Satans deceive you into praying to an idol to hinder your prayers. Enter boldly into the throne of grace and speak to your Father that is in heaven. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need.